Hello and welcome back to Mars. I'm Mick. We're playing Station Ears. Now today we're back at our programming workstation. We're going to be doing a bit more MIPS programming. Today we're going to take a bit of a look at conditional branching. Now this is going to be the greatest source of power in your programming and it'll probably be your greatest source of headaches. But you know, as they say, with great power comes something, something, something. Now a piece of code in its simplest form is just a list of instructions. It'll run straight from the top and work all the way through, unless, of course, one of those instructions is to not go all the way through. Our programs basically, before we've done, we've, we've set up our aliases at the top, and then we've gone into a, a loop at the bottom, which, as it follows the instructions, it'll do that one, do that one, that one, that one, that one, that one, all the code in between. When it gets this one, it will perform that instruction, which says, go back to there, and then it will continue performing the instructions. Now, J jump is a an unconditional jump statement so it is good for forming an infinite loop which is pretty much going to cover the body of your program most of the time because it's not very often you want a program to end you want it to keep doing its thing so jump is often used there but there's sometimes you don't want it to always perform a jump sometimes you'll just want it to do it under certain circumstances that's where we get to the branch commands now our branch commands are sorted out nicely on the on the station is wiki. We type in MIPS and we have it there. Now there are a huge number of branch commands. They are all our B commands. That's these three columns here. Now we've dealt with the set ones before, which was just the one column, and we found that most of them are just variations on the same thing. But now we've got a heap of them here. Now these ones are set into three distinct groups as we have three columns here we have your standard branch commands which once again are just variations of different conditions for the same function we have the branch and return which we use for functions which we won't go into today and we have the relative branches which can be a cause of great pain so we'll try and avoid them at the moment uh, not until you really want to just give yourself a headache, then we can get into them. But we'll just stick with this first column today. That will give us the bulk of what we need for our programming. So we're starting with a very basic code. We've just set up our aliases. And we've just got one here which will save to the light on value 1. It'll wait a tick. Then save light value on value off. So I'm just switch the light on, then off, and just wait a tick in between. So if we confirm... Export that just to show that it is going through a loop. I switch it on. We get the light switching on and off. That's very irritating. Right, so what's happening in the code is it goes, starts at the start, then hits our start marker for our loop, does the code, then the instruction is jump back to the top. So I'll do the code, jump back to the top, do the code, jump back to the top. Now it is following through these. It does go through these ones once because you only need to set up the aliases once. You can re-alias things if you like, but we'll save that one for another day. And so just to prove that it does have to do that, if I copy that code up to the top, now before the, before we've told the program what light one means, it'll just be rubbish then, I won't understand that. So if we confirm that, export it, now if we switch it on, it throws an error. It says, I uh, don't quite understand that. Of course, we go back into our program there, it sort of highlights light one as red, so it's like, oh, I don't know what light one means because we don't, we haven't told it yet. So that, that is your infinite loop there. It's unconditional, it will always do it. But with our function commands, we do have our branch commands. Now, all B commands there are the branch commands. So I say there's a lot of them there because there are three sets of them. Um, but they will do just variations on the same thing. So it's be the, be the same as uh, what, what was on the set values, but these ones, instead of just setting a register value, will actually branch the program to another spot. So we're going to, we're, what we're going to do is we're going to read the switch, and we're going to do something different based on, on what, what we want the switch to do. So for that, we're going to use a branch equal to zero. So we're going to read the switch. If the switch is equal to zero, we're going to branch to another location. Okay, so we've added in two new lines of code. We've used the branch equal to zero, which is just branch to line 
be or a tag which we're using here if a is equal to zero it's either a or a register we've given it a register so we've loaded into a register zero the switch setting command so whatever the switch is set to the switch can either be set to one or zero it's just an on off switch if it's set to zero let's go back to the start so when that switch is set to zero it should just branch back to the start and never get to this piece of code down here with the light switches on and off now if I confirm that export it switch it on no errors if I switch switch the switch on the light starts flashing switch it off it stops again now I can create a loop and put it on the counter so we can just see that it is still going through the loop now we've added a few more lines of code We've named a register to R1, we've called a counter. Now move is a command which will just set a register to a number. So counter, we want to move zero into the counter variable. That's all it is, it sets counter to zero. Right, so that's the first thing we want to do to find the counter, set it to zero. Now inside of our loop, we have save to the display setting whatever the counter is. So that'll just update the display with whatever our counter is. Then we use add, which is a math command. So the counter now equals whatever the counter was plus one. So that'll just increment the counter each time it goes through the loop. Then we've just got a yield there to give it a chance to display those settings. All right, then we're into our test. And the test will either say, just go back to the start, or it'll say, let it go through and turn the light on and off. All right, there we go. Firm. If we export that we see our counter is working so it is going through the loop but the light is not coming on switch the light on the light is now flashing and we're still going through the counter switch it off and it stops so that's one of the things we can do is we can actually use you using a branch command there to actually sort of skip that piece of code at the end there you typically, well, I typically use them for if, if something doesn't need to be done, whether you're either waiting for a button to be pressed or you are waiting for a certain condition to be met. You know, if, if, if it's not, if it's still too cold, don't do, you don't need to do anything at all. Once it's warm enough, you might then have to go plant something or turn on all your harveys, turn on all your... your uh, uh, grow lights and all that sort of stuff there. So there might be something complex you have to do After a certain point, but up to that point you just do nothing. Just go back to the start and skip it all So when there's is let us say there's many different ways you can use it So when you can also use it to skip over something and go to a different one So this time instead of jumping back to the start We're just going to skip over switching that light on and I might switch a different light on Right, so I've just copied this piece of code here down to another one, except instead of turning light one on and off, we're actually turning light two on and off. I've created another tag down here called light two on. So with our tag, our branch now, instead of going back to the start and missing that bit, we still want to switch light two on. So instead of there, we're going to copy that one, paste him into there, and we're going to now jump over light one and just switch light two on. So if that condition is not met, it'll switch light one on, then switch light two on, then go back to the start. If that condition is met, we skip light one and just go straight to light two. Okay, confirm. We'll export that. So we've just got light two going on. Switch it. Light one on, light two on. One on, two on. We're still going through our counter. Click the switch, we skip light one, and just go straight to light two. So now with that same same type of thing here, we can actually get it to perform completely different code. So if I just put back in here, I jump back to the start. Now my main loop is this one here. When the condition is not met, it will only switch on light one. When the condition is met, it will jump outside of that loop completely and do a completely different bit of code before going back to the start. So if you have a complex condition, I mean, we use, before we use the set variable just to switch things on and off 
by passing a, a variable to it. If you have something that's a lot more complicated than just switching something on and off, you can have alternate pieces of code. So now if the condition is not met, we perform this piece of code. If the condition is met, we jump out and perform this piece of code. So that is a branching one to just, just for a more complex situation. So when the switch is on, light one, switch is off, light two. Confirm that, export it, switch it on. Got light two going, click the switch. Now light one's going. So we've got the alternate piece of code going just depending on what conditions are met. Now branch displays can be used to go anywhere. It doesn't have to be within our main loop. We can get it to skip outside of our loop below, but we can also get it to skip back earlier in the code. So now we have, for a previous example here, just set up a counter. We've defined our, our counter, set it to zero, and then incremented it for each loop of the loop we go around. So, but uh, if, if you want to reset it, uh, you can just then tell it to zero, or we can jump back up to the start. So I can put another tag in here and just, just call it reset. Now when the code first comes back here, reset means nothing to it. It's just, it's just a tag you've used for your own thing. Now we have the find a button here, and we're going to use that to reset it. So our reset tag is set up here. We go past the counter where it resets the counter to zero. That's where it goes on the first end. We get to our main loop and it'll just count. Now, when we load the setting from the button, when the button is not pressed, it's zero. So if the button is zero, just go back to the start, keep counting. When the button is not zero, so we'll branch. When it's greater than zero, if our register R0 is greater than zero, go to reset. So it'll go through this loop. If it, that can dip button is pressed, we jump back up higher in the code and we find our reset there, then back into the loop again. So it's just controlling the flow of our program to get what we want. So confirm, export that, switch it on. There we go, we have our counter going. Push the button and away we go again. Now counting in loops can be a useful thing, especially if you want it to do a loop a certain number of times. So here we have our two loops set up. We have loop one and loop two. I put a lot of thought into those names, don't make fun of them. So from the start, we set our counter to zero. Loop one, we switch our light on, we switch the light off, light one. And then it just increments the counter. And we're saying branch less than. So when the counter is less than three, Go back to loop one. So it'll keep doing that, increment the counter. Increment the counter, so it'll count each loop. And once it gets to three, move on. We reset the counter to zero, and we go into loop two. Light two on, light two off, increment the counter, check the counter. Is it less than two? Back to the start. We go, confirm. So we export that one. One, two, three flashes. One, two flashes and back to the start. So that is just performing an ongoing annoying loop that will just sort of scoot around there, count the number of times, count the number of times, and back to loop. So there's two loops inside a larger loop. So that's how your code's going to go. It's just being a continue, continuous set of loops, either skipping over bits of code, jumping back to the further in the code, whatever you like to do. It all comes back to how you want your program to run. As I say, these are very powerful commands and you'll be able to make a lot out of your programming there. But they will also be, because they're so powerful, it opens up such a huge amount of opportunities for what you can program, you'll probably be scratching your head as to what to do with it. So, as I say, we've got a few different sets of branch commands. Try and avoid the branch relative ones for now until you know what you're doing. Uh, just stick with the branch ones and we'll get to the other ones at later days. So, until next time, happy building. See ya.